A racist who touts himself a pastor and a social justice leader spent the weekend spouting off racial tropes, demonizing white people, and insulting anyone, including black people, who disagree as Klansmen and white supremacy apologists. When I had the audacity to push back, he went on a tirade, calling me all kinds of nasty names and accusing me of hating black people. And here's why I'm telling you all this. See, race-baiting bigots like this, who can't seem to talk about anything but their own oppression, who spend all day throwing word bombs on social media to pick a fight, they want us mad. Mad at them, mad at each other, mad at the world. Because here's the ugly truth. They want racism. They need it. It's their claim to fame, and they'll do and say anything to keep it going. They will create it if they need to, and they'll celebrate when it leads to violence, death, and despair. So, knowing this, and in the face of a Twitter hissy fit that was meant to publicly insult and enrage me, here's my response. Over the weekend, I got into it on Twitter with a racist who masquerades as a Christ follower and a social justice advocate. Let me explain. Bishop Talbert Swan, who's about as much of a Christian leader as Joe Biden is an economist, tweeted this, whiteness is an unrelenting, demonic force of evil. He also tweeted a whole bunch of other garbage because, see, that's all he does. He called Herschel Walker a self-loathing, sycophantic, buck-dancing, white supremacy apologist who was concussed too many times. He once called Candace Owens a coon because while Swan here thinks that any white person who criticizes him is a bigot, he loves using slurs against other black people who don't lockstep like good little soldiers in his race war. So let's talk about his ideology because guys like Swan spew the same vile racism that's used by white supremacists like the Buffalo Shooter to commit the most heinous crimes imaginable. Two sides one coin. In response to Swan's tweet that whiteness is an unrelenting demonic force of evil, I answered that Swan's entire goal is to create more white supremacists to validate his own race-baiting agenda. This so-called Christian pastor then called me a Klansman, melanin-deprived, and heifer. Of course, he didn't spell heifer correctly. If you're going to insult me, at least have the self-respect to use proper grammar, but whatever. Because, see, it doesn't matter what nasty names he uses or how many of his social media lemmings pile on. I stand by every word. Race-baiting instigators like Swan, who do nothing but troll Twitter all day trying to think of the most inflammatory, hateful, divisive things they can muster up for clicks, people like that want more violence, like Buffalo. They love it. When they wake up in the morning and open their timeline and see there's been another mass casualty event, the first thing they do is pray to whatever false god they believe in that it was a white dude with a gun. The second thing they do is hope that a black person was shot. And if they're really, really lucky, they'll find the words racially motivated somewhere in the article. And then they know they've hit the jackpot. Now, if those things don't fit, if the criminal wasn't white, wasn't carrying a rifle, didn't kill a minority member, didn't have a racist bent, if it was a black man with a handgun or an SUV, or if it was yet another chapter in the never-ending saga of black-on-black -black crime, if it was an Islamic terrorist or a black Hebrew, that story gets dropped like a hot rock. Those aren't profitable offenses. Oh, but the buffalo shooter is. See, activists whose entire claim to fame is screaming about systemic racism, whether they be black, white, whatever, these guys practically sit in the airport on standby waiting for the next nut job to pop off, hoping it fits their narrative so they can rush in and give a speech. Fire off the next hot take on social media. Maybe do a couple stints on MSNBC. And by sit in the airport, I do mean that metaphorically because most of these guys are millionaires who fly around on private jets. They're about as oppressed as my left foot. And without racism, they wouldn't have careers. They need it. When they can't find it, they create it. And when they happen upon it, they stir it up. Doesn't matter how statistically infrequent it is. Doesn't matter that a black person in America is far more likely to be shot and killed by someone of their own race. Doesn't matter. Swan and those like him need racially motivated violence to exist. The Al Sharptons, the Louis Farrakhans, the Ellie Mistels. Racial division is their bread and butter. It's what made them famous. And without it, they'd be nothing more than bitter men with no followers and nothing to scream about. So they fuel it. When a crazy guy with a neo-Nazi complex walks into a grocery store and lights it up because he believes he's in a race war, and the first thing you do is rush over to Twitter and start blathering about how all whiteness is evil and everyone who doesn't agree with you is a pillowcase wearing Klansmen crying white tears, you know exactly what you're doing. You're dumping gasoline on a fire, hoping it ignites everything around it so you can pat the victims on the head and collect the insurance money. See, I think many conservatives have been looking at this all wrong. We've long since believed that the goal of groups like Black Lives Matter, 
the CRT pushers, race baiting professional town criers like Swan here, they want white people to admit their inherent racism and their evilness. We need to teach little black and brown children to accept their oppression and little white children to accept their privilege. But that's not the goal. They don't want all of us broken down and contrite. They want us angry at each other. They want black children to grow up pissed off at black history, at their country, at their supposed subjugation. That's why they hate black people who refuse to go along with that riff or are successful, because y'all aren't pulling your end of the rope here. And they want white children to grow up angry at having been called privileged little racists their entire lives, no matter where they came from or what they do. Whether you are white, black, Latino, whatever. People like Swan want you mad because he knows that for every million irritated but still normal people out there, there's a crazy dude waiting to pop off, and that's the one he's looking for. That's the one he needs. It keeps him in business. Don't play that game. Don't even sit in the stands. Get off social media, turn off the TV, go out into the world where you will have real interactions with real people of every shape, size, color, and creed, and the vast majority of them will be good. Do not let the outrage machine and the fear mongers fuel up anger so that they can profit. After getting called a clan loving melanin-deprived heifer by this attention-seeking hack the other day, I went out to run some errands. I held a place in line for a young black guy who needed to go grab something he'd forgotten, and then a kind Latino man helped me exchange a pair of pants. And then we went to our local grocery store where we have a favorite manager. She's a black lady named Wanda, and she loves my chunky little 10-month-old white daughter and my blonde-haired 2-year-old son. I usually have my hands full, so a kind Indian lady helped us push out our groceries. And then the next day, my family woke up and headed out to our diverse church, where my little blue-eyed kid was so excited to play with his best friend, a little boy whose mom is white and whose dad is black and Filipino, both of whom are very dear to our family. That is the real world. That's the real world that Swan wants you to forget exists. Live there not in his circus tent of funhouse mirrors and lies, where he's selling all the tickets. And that's your Reality Check America. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube and Rumble pages, like us on Facebook and Twitter, and stay sane out there.